World War II is often associated with the unimaginable scale. Great battles on land, in the air, on the water. Battle of Monte Cassino, Battle of Britain, landing in Normandy, Pearl Harbor. Events of great importance. Tragedies that claimed hundreds of thousands of victims, monuments of the past. These are themes often raised in pop culture, directly identified with war and glorified by the so-called Western world, which was located in the center of war. The events of the Ost Front, i.e. the Eastern Front, seem to be put aside in this context. Everyone knows that the war in the East also took place, and that the USSR played a key role in it. But it is often forgotten that it was in the East that the war showed its true hellish face. In recent years, the awareness of the events which took place on the Eastern Front has been increasing, but it is still not as widespread as it should be, if only because of the respect for the victims whose lives were taken by Ostfront. And the number of victims was unimaginable. 20 million people were killed. Perhaps, however, the worst thing is not how many people died, but how they died. Are we even morally entitled to such evaluation? Most of these millions did not die in battle defending their country or sacrificing themselves for greater good. No. The death of most of the 20 million people were completely senseless, unplanned, and chaotic. One could say that it was a side effect of the real war going on somewhere else. Although, of course, the Eastern Front took the lives of many victims during many, many battles. Most of the victims died of starvation, slowly and cruelly. The description of the images which could be seen at the time is more than terrifying. Piles of still-moving skeletons on which thin, pale parchments of leather were drawn. Infernal visions of some controversial artist. If anyone looked down at it at all, they would probably think that those creatures were writhing worms. And they were people. People who lived life to the fullest. They loved, dreamed, they had plans until recently, before they were absorbed by utter nonsense, before they were absorbed by utter depravity. What actually happened in the East? Well, it can be said the Germans decided to test their most controversial and ruthless plans on the Eastern population, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Russians, and many other nations. The first step taken was Beck's hunger plan. Beck was the Reich Minister for Food and Agriculture. He developed his plan in the spring of 1941 as political and economic guidelines for organizations in the East. The plan assumed the confiscation of surplus food from the territories which the Wehrmacht entered and handed them over to the forces fighting on the Eastern Front. In fact, the inhabitants of the conquered areas were deprived of all food and supplies. The well-thought assumption was to starve up to 30 million people to death. After Bax's plan, the time came for the General Plan Ost. It was a huge operation. Its purpose was to fully subordinate all of Central and Eastern Europe. The idea came from the original ideas of war, including the acquisition of living space for racially superior Aryans. It is hard to imagine the terrifying scale of this plan. It assumed almost complete extermination of the population living in the aforementioned areas, and the use of a small percentage of those who stayed alive for hard, exhausting work. As far as Russians were concerned, it was planned to apply the suspension of population growth, which was to lead to their biological annihilation. Admittedly, these plans sound unbelievable, and yet they were real. One cannot forget about the great battles on the Eastern Front. It was there that the biggest and most tragic fights took place. Leningrad, Stalingrad, Kerch, Kiev, Kursk, Minsk, the list goes on. Fortunately, they are spoken about more and more often, restoring their rightful place in history. Few people are aware of this, but it was the Eastern Front that decided the fate of the war. Were it not for the absolute exhaustion of the Germans after the fight against the Russians on their territory, Normandy would not have happened. The plans of the Nazis were inhuman and unimaginable, but Russia's revenge also shocks with its scale and cruelty. 
Let us mention Operation Bagration, which led to almost complete destruction of the German Army Group Center. As a result of this operation, and the fighting in Belarus, Lithuania, and Eastern Poland, the USSR regained all the territory lost during the German Operation Barbarossa. The front was pushed from the Vitebsk line all the way to Warsaw. This was the greatest humiliation of the Germans. Russia triumphed, soaking in the blood of their opponents. The enemies of Russia were decimated, and they never managed to raise enough. The war was almost won. Europe often forgets about the Eastern Front, but one could dare to say that today's shape of Europe exists only thanks to the Eastern Front. Today nobody thinks that 80% of the Wehrmacht losses were the result of fighting in the East. But these German losses are the result of equal, if not greater, cruelty of the Red Army. While forming a statement that Central and Eastern Europe owes a lot to the Soviets, it is worth giving a thought how much they took in return. <laughs>